happy Star Wars and or day to every single one of you Star Wars fans. We have episode 5 to talk in full spoiler details. It seems like there's not that much of a conversation happening around this episode. But if you are enjoying and or just in general, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as comment down below. Because for the most part, I will be here every single week as long as there's some people here to talk about this show because the last few weeks it feels like there hasn't been but with that said i am really loving this show and this episode alone really dives into it and my prediction comes to fruition specifically in the way that they are structuring the show so within the first three episodes we see that it's story story payoff build off bomb going off and when it comes out of the story of it all the thing that I love is that it builds up the characters, builds up Andor a bit, builds up everyone around there, then moves us into the action. And I'm all fine with that, by the way. This, I was predicting, okay, once I saw episode four, I'm like, okay, episode four is doing the same thing. And what we're going to do is now pay, is we're going to do build up, build up, pay off again. And this episode proves that again. I think this is excellent writing in that manner. I can't emphasize enough how well done the writing is in Andor. No matter if you're enjoying the show or not, the Andor, like the writing in here specifically feels like a more adultish show than compared to many other Disney Plus shows in general. And specifically when I look at Star Wars, I, I mean, personally for me, The Mandalorian will probably always be my favorite thing that Star Wars live action TV series have done. Maybe until Ahsoka because I'm so, I mean, I, I love Ahsoka, but Andor is a story that I have not been that excited for due to the fact that, you know, I have Rebels. I've seen some of the stuff within there when the Rebellion was coming up to an uprise and I've seen Rogue One. But Andor truly is the start of that rebellion. And I think this is a really interesting idea. And each episode gratifies me and makes me love this series even more. And it's really much an important piece to that all. And this episode alone, what it really shows me is the personality between a lot of these characters. And the way that it's starting to make you understand and like each and every one of these characters. And something that such a great prequel can do is clearly we know the fate of Andor. We know where he's going to go. Clearly we know the fate of Moff Ma. Moff, Moff, the, I, I think I'm saying that right. I could be completely wrong. It's literally midnight as I'm recording this. So bear with me as I talk. But uh, when it looks at that and we see Andor and we see the certain instances like that, something with what Breaking uh, Better Call Saul did so well as a prequel was it established new characters as well for us to kind of care about, but we don't know what happens to them. And Andor's kind of taking the same approach here where there are certain characters in this episode specifically, you know, even the last couple of ones where it introduced Stellan Skarsgård's character where you're like, okay, this character is very interesting. There's an interesting dynamic to him. And even by the end of this episode where we see Stellan Skarsgård's character and how he's really caring for them and, you know, he his partner in all this and they're discussing this and he goes, well, you know, I, I wasn't careful with Andor. He could lead us back. Same with the girl. And... For me, you see the worrisome in his, but he's okay with taking that risk because of what this symbolism, what this mission is going to do for the rebellion itself. And I, I really love that. And I love the intrigue of how it takes its time with each and every one of the characters. We have that blue officer kind of group guy who I can never really remember his name. I think his name is Seville. He's dealing with the ramifications of his failures and what that's going to do with him. Then we have the other Imperial Guard who's all in white. And again, some of these names I'm just completely flabbergasted by. It's the same thing with Rogue One. I couldn't remember all the names. I still can't, so don't even try to get me on that. But again, we see her aspirations. But the best parts about this episode were when we focused in on this rebellion group. And Andor's interactions with them. And the rising tensions of them trying to figure out who is this Andor person. And it all builds up to him pretty much saying, this is who I am. I'm doing this for money. I don't care about what you guys are doing, but I know for the hell of the fact that this is, I need to take over this because I know what I'm going to be doing. And it's a different way of looking at it, but it's also, this is the Andor that we did meet at the beginning of Rogue One. And it's just the coming parts of him. And the smaller moments we get in here with the characters is the thing that really made me build up and really start to care about them, which I'm sure is the reasoning that some of these characters will probably die next week, specifically that younger kid. Uh, maybe he has some Star Wars lore that I'm completely forgetting at the time being, but I, I have a feeling he's probably going to die next week. They gave us some interactions. We're like, oh, this kid's like cool and stuff. His little radar jammer thing that he has. Now nah, he's probably going to die. 
And I think next week is going to be an explosive and really crazy episode, if I don't say so myself. But one of the big things I really want to look at, and I, I am so mad, I looked up the actor's name before starting to record this, but he's from the excellent show this year from Hulu called The Bear. Um, he's the one who puts the knife to his neck. This character, his story talking about why he's doing this and what happened to his brother and why he hates the Empire is something that you, I, I mean, for the better of me, have never heard about suicide in the Star Wars universe. This series feels brutes to the ground very away from the fantastical elements of Star Wars, but more towards the allegory of what George Lucas had actually established within Star Wars originally. And this does feel putting the war back in Star Wars. So I, I really do like that. And that one conversation was so important because it made Andor kind of understand who he was. And I think in the same way, Andor could kind of see that relation to his past. And overall, those elements are the things that are really keeping me engaged with this. I mean, this is not a show that's having Easter eggs every week. Besides the Jakku reference, I thought that was kind of cool. At least I thought I heard Jakku. Again, it's midnight. I, I'm recording this late as hell. But this is a show that each episode continues to build up that intrigue for me to where I'm interested for the next one. I can't wait for the next one. I crave for that next one. And it's a series that I'm really loving. And I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. So thank you so much again for watching this and bearing with me as my exhaustion is kicking into me. It's so late, I'm ready to go to bed. But may the force be with all of you guys. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.